Hello, folks and blokes. This is the Lord Haha ha Podcast, and this is your host, Lord Haha. Ha. Well, this is the second part of the um, Middle East report, and uh, we barely got past the first few sentences of this article in Jerusalem Post. Um, we were on the part, uh, focusing on the part that concerned Iran's destabilizing um sort of effect on the rest of the Middle East in terms of where they are present in the Middle East. And I think that this is the Jerusalem Post, so of course they're going to specifically mention that as a concern because Iran and Israel have sort of a track record since the Islamic Revolution of not quite getting along. So what's what's going on here? I mean, what is this all about? Why is this this leaning on on America. Well, America sort of backs up Israel at times, and it has done so, and I think in sometimes a legitimate sense in case, as in 1973 when President Richard Nixon um, backed the state of Israel with uh, weapons when it seemed um, quite, um, you know, an impervious kind of situation for the um, Israelis as they were, you know, sort of stared down by Syria and Egypt on both sides, and to be in quite a predicament. So there was some good here, but this sort of radicalized the um, Israeli um, sort of party system. The Likud party came to power afterwards, and we sort of have fed into that radicalism. We've fed into the multiple different political factions and variants in Israel, you know, as good, when I think all of them, you know, except Maybe for a few. I mean, if Martin Buber was alive, the um, Jewish philosopher, maybe he would have had a very good, you know, um, you know, political system or to to advance. Or maybe if Albert Einstein was alive, he was he was once asked to be the prime minister of Israel. Um, he could have proposed, you know, a, a, a political solution to Israel's problems or political ideology that would have, you know, been in some way, you know not reprehensible. So, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, this is is the Jewish matter, but I think that Israel wants to expand in the region. They want to create, they feed off this instability. They feed off radical Islam and in such a way that they, um, uh, you know, see it as a way for them to weaken governments and to then expand themselves in the region. So if Israel can do it, why can't Iran? You'd think, well, Israel's, you know, considered a democracy. They have a highly, you know, advanced, you know, society. They produce all kinds of technologies and pharmaceuticals. You know, they have a very, very um, much, you know, uh, a system, you know, of you know, human rights compared to the other nations around them. But is it really human rights? I mean, they're firing, you know, in the past, they've fired, you know, rockets on Palestinian, you know, um, uh, soccer fields, on soccer fields with Palestinian children playing on them. They have, you know, blockaded, you know, by uh, land and by sea, the Palestinians. They have, um, they have, um, you know, in many ways, they have, you know, they've bombed hospitals, they've bombed schoolhouses. This is stuff that happens in Syria, and Syria has a legitimate reasoning. You know, there's terrorists, you know, all over the place in Syria. Palestinians are not a terroristic people. Yeah, Hamas might be a terrorist group, and it might wish to brainwash the Palestinian people. But in any case, I think, you know, Israel is not this human rights model, as some make it out to seem. And I think it it sort of reflects back on a sort of growing concern of our, you know, uh, you know, understanding and our sort of approach to human rights issues, which seems to be, um, you know, there's there's a lot to be a lot of questions to be asked, you know, as it concerns, you know, the human rights situations in our pop in our population towards white Western Europeans, which is abhorrent, especially when white. Western Europeans built this land, you know, and has made it prosperous and democratic and uh, made it a, made it available for other non-whites, you know, um, and, and it wasn't at their leisure. It wasn't at their, you know, at their behest. It wasn't at, you know, at the basis of their rules and what they had to, you know, sort of implement in the system. It was a genuine, you know, extension of hu- hu- humaneness and um 
I think that, you know, they're biting off the very finger that has fed them. So there's all kinds of problems in America and that now we would we would back Israel shows that we're we're going down that route. You know, I think Israel wants to infiltrate our country. I think they already have through various different institutions, lobbying groups, the political factions, um, through, you know, the education system to a certain extent, through think tanks, through the media. Um, and they play a heavy role, you know, in, in Biden's, you know, cabinet, you look at Garland, the attorney general, um, you know, look at, um, you look at the head of the CDC, um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of, you know, Jews that are just, you know, completely, you know, sort of spread out throughout the, you know, the system, the political system, the, the institutional system of America. And to me, they're the, the most threatening component to our national security. You know, Cicero says, the, the greatest, the famous Roman senator, Cicero said the greatest threat is the threat from within. And that is exactly what we're dealing with in Israel, uh, with Israel and its Jewish, you know, uh, its Jewish comrades here in the United States. And so this is what needs to be set up. They need... They need to, that's why Israel is set up, you know, Lord Balfour set up Israel so that they had a place to go so that they wouldn't bother European peoples, Western European peoples. So they wouldn't bother European peoples in general, you know, and they wouldn't infiltrate their countries. And at the same time, they wouldn't feel un, unwelcome and uninvited. So they had a place of their own to go to. And I think, I think that should be something that is, is emphasized here that this is Israel. Israel needs to be protected. But let's let's find let's find another way to to set up a presence in the Middle East to to be there for issues in the Middle East and also for national security threats and at the same time potentially to improve our economy in whatever way possible. That would be a Kurdish state. A Kurdish state might not be to the liking of Turkey, um, but in any case, Turkey is not a reliable ally. You know, Turkey has backed. Al Qaeda in Syria. Turkey has allowed ISIS to facilitate itself through Turkey. Uh, Turkey has bought, um, you know, one million dollars worth of oil from um, ISIS when they ruled large parts of Syria back a couple of years ago. Um, they have a very poor human human rights record, and um, in a sense, you know, if the PKK and the YPG are terrorist groups. Um, then, you know, Turkey's sort of, uh, Turkey's, Turkey's sort of using that to allow itself to expand and become sort of somewhat of an agent of a, of, of what I would consider sort of, you know, a hardline approach. Maybe, maybe they're not terrorists, but a hardline approach to the area that I think is, not within our realm of interest and not within our realm of, you know, what, what is our objective? And so, so Turkey sort of turns this aside and says, well, no, you know, it's, it's a Turkish issue in the Middle East, just as much as it is Chinese or Russian, you know? Um, and I will get to that a little bit later, but I think we need something like that to offset our, you know, investment in Israel, you know, where Israel is our buddies. And then, you know, uh, we pat them on the back. They give us a reason to be interested in whatever they're doing, you know, in the Middle East or allow us to go on, you know, our mission. They have nothing to do with the mission to show we're, we're just wiping our hands clean of this whole matter. Um, you go you go about this mission in the way that you you find is good for you. But remember, you're working for us, you know, and you're going to do things on, on account of, you know, uh, promoting the interest of our state so that we don't have we don't have to. And we can rely on you. We will pay you favorably with subverting you morally and bringing in social and moral degeneracy to your society. So, again, therein lies the problem. And um, it's going to be a long and continual problem with a lot of longevity until someone does something about it, of course. Um, and if someone can, it would be through the political machine, through the political engine, through the institutions. You know, getting the right people into positions of power, 
within, you know, the lowest level of society to the highest level of society so that we can rework, you know, society through that, through that way. And I think if we do, we create a more positive society and these Jewish factions will, will sort of become more silent. They will, they will become more, they will become more tolerable. You know, it's, it's what you create in society that allows, you know, allows you to make good friendships with Jews, you know, now, when you don't press it and you press things in the way in the down the route of degeneracy, down the route of glut of ostentatious, uh, you know, luxuries and pleasures, you know, well, of course, they're going to follow follow that route and they're going to try to subvert the goy and they're going to try to play the role of the uh, of the it if you give them that opportunity. But in any case, um I'd like to move onwards in this whole matter. And um, before I do so, I want to say that Israel is a national security threat, not just as terms they represent, re, as they represent to us in a, in a domestic sense, but also in, sen- in the sense that I don't know, I think they care about national security threats around them. They, they, won't, they won't mind radical Islam as much because it allows them the capacity to engineer situations to slowly expand into the middle east without being seen as such and when they do it, it erupt you know it'll be too late you know for us because i think they want to in a sense have us you know become weaker and weaker just as, as we are making governments in the middle east weaker and weaker so they work on our behalf so we implement our ideology so we Im- implement our political projects there that um in many ways, will, you know, not bring a healthy, functional society and culture to the Middle East, but will bring a society that is, again, wallows in its own misery as we prosper and celebrate in our own uh, degeneracy um, and in uh, the growing consumer, uh, the con- consumerist world that we live in that is that is being fueled by capitalism and is quickly becoming more of a kind of bridge towards which you know we're going to all go down the path of socialism and maybe even communism in the future you know but it's it's a very scary dynamic and we're not aware of it we just we just give ourselves over to it or we just we're unconsciously and unknowingly willing ourselves to our own to our own demise and without seeing it and that's why i like i like this podcast because it's here to you know sort of enlighten others on such matters as what i'm talking about So again, this is about strengthening Israel, building up their reserves, building up their land, and making our economy run out of Israel, making our, you know, sort of our power is directed from Israel back to us, and they redirect it to us, whether through the black market or however it may be, you know, they're the ones that get the rewards and then they funnel it back to us as part of this sort of, you know, um, good cop, bad cop scheme that if you can consider either one of them good um you know sort of channeling and funneling you know what we have created what we have produced economically and then they you know sort of you know build on top of that you know they build they build on top of that and then you know they thrust it back whatever they can to us so that you know they can be you know eternally you know su- supporting of us so that we can eternally support them with our military uh you know and with um our politicians and our political system now how much will it reach the people i don't think much because after a while they'll just say you know americans are a waste let's just focus on israel you know it's a jewish supremacist thing you know and they make it look like they're helping us out but really it's us tied into them and it's because of this whole holocaust sensationalism there were other peoples that were killed in the Holocaust. There were gypsies, there were Slavs, there were Soviet POWs. I mean, 20 million Russians lost their lives. Uh, uh, quite a few, more than 10 million Slavs lost their lives too. And um, there were only 5 million Jews that lost their lives. So it's it's all hocus pocus. It's all playing into Israel for whatever degenerate factions that run our country. But uh Anyways, I will continue this in the next podcast.